to another episode of Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Cassie Prolongo, and of course, joining me as always is the wonderful Nora Eisner. Hey, Nora. Hi, Cassie. So I hope that you're joining us today with a coffee or a tea or a beverage of your choice, depending on where you're at in the world, and you're here to talk about and learn about science. So we've been going through a really good journey, actually. We've been doing quite a lot of cool stuff. I hope you've been checking out our videos. Now we're delving into background flux. We did that on our previous episode. And I think now the sort of the thematic thing that we're talking about is if it's not a planet, what else could it be? And I think that tees it off really well for Nora today um, in, in continuing this thing of determining false positives. So Nora, what, what are we gonna talk about for today's episode? Yeah, as you said, we're going to continue on, on our journey of false positives. Um, and today we're going to look at um, how to identify things that are in the background. So this again is a false positive, is something that looks like a planet, or planet transit signal, I should say, um, but it's not. And we can look at what, what else it can be. So yeah. we're going to actually look at two different tests today um, that you can, these are kind of standard, we call them diagnostic tests to help look at a signal and just to determine whether that's a real signal or not. Um, mm. So as always, I will share my screen. Um, like with the last notebook, um, there's quite a lot of code in here. Uh, the notebook will become available, but I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to write the code out. The code is just already in here. Don't worry about the code too much. Um, but of course, if you are interested in what the code is doing, do, do look at the, the online version and th there will be comments along, along that as well. Um, but more importantly for today, we'll just look at what, what the kind of the, the plots, the resulting diagnostic actually means and how we can interpret it. All right. I think we're ready to do that. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so we're just looking at a, a random target here. This is a target that has a transit in it. Uh, as we can see here, we're downloading the data, we're plotting the data. So this is kind of a cutout of around the target. And each one of these boxes is a pixel. And the brightness or the color of that, sorry, the color of that pixel is representative of the kind of brightness of that. So if there's a bright star there, then it shows up kind of get this lovely yellow color and we know there is something bright there. Um, and that red dash thing around it, that's the mask that is being used to extract that aperture. Sorry, it's the mask that's being used, the aperture, start that again. It's the aperture that's being used to extract the light curve. So for example, this light curve that we have underneath here, this would be kind of the light curve that you see on Planet Hunter's test. And there we have that lovely yes. transit. Yes. All right. So this test is called pixel by pixel light curve plot. So we just talked about how we have this aperture here and how we use this to extract an entire light curve. And we're kind of, when we're doing that, when we're extracting this light curve, we're summing up all of the light within all of these pixels or within all of these red ones. But with this pixel by pixel light curve plot, what we're instead doing is we're extracting a light curve for each individual pixel. Oh, so wow. we're going to ignore all of this code. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just keep scrolling. Um, That's a little terrifying. There's quite a lot of code there. Is that when people download it and do this themselves, are they going to see a lot of this code as well? Are they going to see it or is that not going to be there? No, the code will be there. Unfortunately, we okay. can't get these plots without the code. So the code okay. will, will be there, but just feel free to ignore it um, or go through it if you're interested um, and come to office hours if you have, have any questions about it. Good plug. Um, uh, all right, let's look at the plot. Let's see what it does. So this is a light curve extracted for each individual pixel around that. And again, the colors that we have in the background are similar colors to what we had up, uh, kind of in the example above, where brighter colors mean that there's more light there. So that's where our target is. And we're not extracting it, or in this case, we're not showing the entire light curve across the 27 days for each pixel, but we're just showing a little cutout around the time where the transit is. So if you are running this, very briefly, if you are going to run this, you can use this notebook. Here you have to enter what kind of when that transit event is. So um, just so it knows where to kind of cut out that pixel. All right, so what, what are we looking for? So what we're looking for in this is that we want that transit event, that dip, we want that to be on our target. So we want that to be on the brightest pixel in here. We want it to be on kind of the central one. That's where our target is. So we wanna make sure that we see dips there and nowhere else. So. These dips are quite small. They are, oh, they are very small, so they are very difficult to see. So if we don't see any dips, that's also totally fine. If we don't see any big spikes anywhere else, um, that is a good sign. That is, that is what we are looking for. That being said, if you do look very carefully on this example, then you can start to, to see that there are, are small dips. 
Mm -hmm. But to make this clearer, hopefully clearer, um, let's show an example of a background eclipsing binary. Um, mm -hmm. So this would be a false positive. So we've now selected a different target. And this is the pixel by pixel Likert plot of, of a completely different target. And our, our target is again here. But you can see over here, there is a very clear signal. So the signal yeah. that we're seeing, that small dip that we saw, is actually coming from over here. And this is called a background eclipsing binary. So an eclipsing binary is simply where you have two stars orbiting around one another. The dips that you get are therefore much bigger because stars are much bigger than planets. Um, and it's in the background. So it's, it's not on target. So it's a background eclipsing binary. And this is a very common false positive. So it's important to look at these types of plots to, to rule those out. Mm -hmm. um, did That's that make awesome. Sense? Yeah, that made a lot of sense. So, um, and going through, you, is this primarily like what you would see as an astronomer, uh, this kind of background, or do you actually see other um, types of false positives too that happen quite frequently? Yeah, so this is a very common false positive. Um, another false positive that we often see in tests is um, an asteroid moving through the field of view. Um, and they also show up in these plots, so that's really cool. Uh, so I have selected one that has an asteroid in it, just a ah. random target. Um, but not one that you memorized, right? This is not, not memorized, memorized any of these. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to tease Nora about this because she's got a couple of them that sh she uses that um, she always has memorized, and I think that's lovely. <laughs> I have a very bad memory. I actually only have two memorized. <laughs> um, yeah, so here is the light curve again. This is for the asteroid. It looks like a transit. So um, this can often be, these are very easily mistaken for, for planet transit signals. But then when we look at the, the pixel by pixel light curve plot, we see this. And wow, that looks this is not really what we different. Want. No. Yeah. This is definitely not what we want. You can see there are spikes, there are dips, there is something going on kind of everywhere. So this is just, this is showing that there is something going on in the background. And in this case, it's an asteroid. Um, I will show another plot that will, that will make it much clearer that it's an asteroid. But if you see something like this, this is definitely a false positive. This is not a, a transit signal. So this again would be would be ruled out. Wow. That's so, and you guys can do this too. You can do it at home. Uh, we're going to have the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, Nora says that she's going to have everything on there. It's, you can go to our website and check it out, um, which is planethunters.coffee. Um, that's really cool, Nora. And I love, I mean, it looks hard, obviously, with the different stuff, but the way that you explained it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's cool that everybody can do this, just like what you do. It's great. Is there anything else that you want to mention about false positives that you think is important for citizen scientists? Yeah, so we can actually just look at a different test at the same time um, that kind of illustrates um, a very similar concept of looking for the background eclipsing binaries and it shows the asteroids, but just in a slightly different way. And it's always good to look at both Ooh. of those tests. Um, right. So I think we can just we can go to a different notebook. I have put them in a different notebook so you can run them separately, the two tests. Um, but they do show, as I just said, very similar things. Um, so this is the in and out of transit flux comparison. Um, I found this just very confusing when I first looked at it, but hopefully I can break it down and hopefully it will make sense. Um, so in this test, if we, again, we're going to start with kind of this cutout that we have here, we have the aperture. The aperture doesn't really matter for this test, um, as you will see in a moment. Uh, this is exactly the same target that we just looked at before. Mm -hmm. And we again scroll past the test. All right, sorry, past the code. Uh, and here we have okay. So in this test, what we have is we have on the left over here, we have the average flux during that transit. So we cut out a very narrow kind of slice in time of like flux during that transit. And we took an average of that. And that's what we have on the left. Then in the middle, we have the same thing. We have the average flux out of the transit. Uh, so when there isn't a dip, and on the right, we have the difference between those two. So this kind of image on the left and the image in the middle, they look quite similar and you can't really see the difference between the two. But when you take the difference between the two, the differences are very small. You can start to see that there is one pixel that stands out. So this is a brighter mm -hmm. pixel. And this pixel is brighter because that shows that the change in flux, that change in brightness is on this pixel. So something is happening on that pixel, and that's great because that's what we're looking for. We want something to happen. We want there to be a change in brightness on that pixel because that's where Just our target more. is, and that's right. where we want that transit to be. So what we don't want, a false positive, yeah. 
which I was going to say, so what's the, we don't want to see one. <laughs> yes. So this is what we don't want to see. So here we have the target uh, again in the middle and we can see that change in brightness, that kind of, when you take that difference image, the change in brightness is on a different pixel. So it's on a nearby star. Um, so we know that this is a background eclipsing binary. This is, as I just said, this is exactly the same example, not as this one, but as this one. So that change in brightness is happening over here. So this is just another way of, of kind of seeing that that's off target and that it's, it's a false positive. Um, but yeah, also a very useful test. And in this one, I think the asteroid is actually much clearer. So if we go down to what an asteroid looks like, you can see it as a kind of just a, a line going across it. So um, when you take the difference in, in images, you can just see, you can see it move across. So I think that's really cool. <laughs> That is really cool because it's at, like actually streaking across the sky and stuff like that. That is amazing. Also, it kind of looks like a retro 1970s sort of pattern, which is interesting to me. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> exactly. Wow, that's really cool. Um, I love that. And, you know, it, the coding and stuff like that, I know it can be very tricky, but it's really helpful to see these figures. Um, it's very clear um, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you're going through and actually trying to determine whether these are false positives or not. So yeah, okay, cool. Anything else that you want to mention? I think this is great for this particular episode. There's a lot of cool stuff here for people to go through. A lot of meat. Yeah, no, well, I think that's enough science, science for one episode. Um, I will, in the, <laughs> in the notebooks that are available online, there will be um, little notes to say where you have to change things if you want to run this, for example, for a different target. Um, and I, it, I'll make it very clear, or it will be very clear um, what code you can ignore and which code you might have to change if you want to run it for a different target. So excellent. You can run this at home. Great. Well, there you go. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us as always. And have a look. We're at planethunters.coffee and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you again, Nora. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.